Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. I realized later, like not just this week, like a few years ago, like, oh, okay, his legs are there. He's just like, (laughs) you know, I just always thought like, yeah, it was unfinished. Like that kind of would be like a cool little, that would be very cool. And now he's being complete. And it's like, whoa, like I kind of wish that was the ending, but that's just my nerdy self. But yeah, then it just cut hard cut to black and we have that great score. But yeah, what a lingering moment, you know, what a haunting moment. You you think... Because are the men still out there? Is she gonna, you know, this is my mind yeah. working. It's what like, does she, she do go now? Back to Jonathan Harker, you know, right? Like, I, I don't know. Here's like, what, what I she... thought mm-hmm. because I'm so glad you're bringing this up because this was the first time I really thought about, like, well, what happens now? Right. You know, movie's over, but like, girl, you're gonna have to like awkwardly leave this <laughs> old church in the castle. Like, how are you gonna explain yourself? I get the impression Harker is done with her. I, uh, the way he says to the guys, like, no, no, let, let them go. Our beginning. work is done, yeah, but hers is, is just beginning, just right? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, hers has just begun. And he yeah. looks at her and, you know, Keanu slash Jonathan Harker is such a nice vibe. We'll get into his acting. I know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But he and has, he colors, has such a kind yeah. of forgiving. <laughs> I know the wig, the wig kept changing every other scene. I'm like, okay, that's a different <laughs> wig than what I just so saw. so white. And then the oh next my God. scene was and, like gray. And I'm like, yes, what? I'm like, where are you going with this? <laughs> that's why I feel like, I feel like we had some scenes cut or yeah. maybe they had some issues like shooting or something. Cause or I'm like, okay, this like is nearby, a straight up different Dracula's wig. Maybe when he's nearby, his oh, hair changes maybe. like to more white. I, I, don't, maybe. I don't know. Like whiter. Like I don't. I was just trying to think that. That's an interesting yeah. theory. But yeah, then it's like, well, then have him say like, oh, my God, my hair is changing whenever something happens, you know? Right. But I just have this impression that she is now like alone. I don't think she kills yeah. herself. I think she's like back to normal. So she's, you know, but I, I don't know. I kind of hope Harker doesn't take her back because she totally cheated on you. She like loved this strange, terrible guy. Right. You know, like I kind of feel I mean, like her really fate that is. She was a reincarnated version. Right, I know. Was yeah, she? I mean, she That's she wasn't question. in control. Were you? I think was she. Or? I think she was. I think she was. Yeah. Do you think she was Elizabetha, or do you think she? Just... I think she could have been, or she could have been like an ancestor. I think there was, yeah. you know, there's definitely that. Totally. Yeah. The, the, you know, the Dracula kind of put that love spell. You know, I don't know if you can put love spells on people, but you know, they can right. seduce people. So oh, totally. She was definitely under his spell. No, for sure. and she was yeah. um, drinking. What was she drinking? Um, absinthe, right? Absinthe. Absinthe. Yeah. Yes. When oh she yeah. Was when she like all this stuff, s- like so... licks the sugar cube. I remember yeah. also that was a moment where I'm like, okay. And she was like... she was drinking that as she like was like remembering yes. things. So like yes. that's what like I was wondering like is this real or is this yeah. like hallucination yeah. and she's seeing things you know i had I mean? forgotten how powerful that scene is yeah, yeah. On her, like date the absinthe i love it and, oh my gosh and the, the again the way Co- coppola it, it and his filmed. team i know showed the you know where she's there but then we have the beautiful you know upside down shot of elizabetha falling yes. and her memories or or imagination really mm-hmm. really amazingly done like so yeah. innovative and yeah it's stuff that you haven't really seen again like i feel like a lot of the visuals are very unique to this movie do you know what yeah. i mean like we don't see a lot of that kind of stuff in horror or in I sci-fi agree. i think that's you what know makes, yeah and i feel like that's what makes this movie this movie so yeah so special right is it the visuals that's why maybe i watch it maybe yeah. a lot you know more than i should at times but yeah. like i just yeah i feel like it's just like it's like a different type of movie so what do you think she did at the end yeah. do you think she just she killed herself or she just walked out there and like did she did she hold on to harker or did she just kind of go back to the u.s on her own what do you think <laughs> or not the u.s uk UK yeah england um london whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> even though her accent was questionable um yeah, yeah. i I don't think she killed herself. You know, part of me was like wondering that, but I really think she would have done that 
you would have seen it, maybe. I think yeah. Coppola would have done that, you know. But I think like, her cutting off his head was really yeah. like, this is the how end. I know you're not going to be able to come back. Even like, yeah. you know, because after Van Helsing tells, you know, I think that's where she got the idea because Van Helsing tells her how he killed Lucy. Remember yes. when they were like at dinner? So yes. I think that like stuck with her. And so she was like, you know, I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure you don't come back. And yeah. Yeah. Do this. So totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. It's a really cool ending for sure. There's a sinister, dark side to him. I find irresistible. I have never met any man with such a passion for life. He is unlike any man. Since we're talking about the actors, I'll mm-hmm. just talk about our four leads and where they were in their careers, right? Because yes. it's funny. I mean, Winona was such a powerhouse, but like she, oh, yeah. she's still kind of new. Like, it's funny. She so we'll we'll start with our lead, Gary Oldman, right? You have yes. to. So Gary Oldman had just been in JFK and mm-hmm. was also in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, right? He mm-hmm. by this time was already nominated for a BAFTA, so he was a big deal. And gosh, he he is. I, and like I'm sure you you sent me that amazing Instagram. I'm sure you've seen some of those like um, behind yes, the scenes the like videos. rehearsals. Yes, because I saw Whoa. you like the ones that I was so watching. Intense. So intense, so yes. intense. But you the know way what? he's love, like I grabbing Winona and like rehearsals. and I feel yeah. like speaking of those videos, just behind the scenes, I was thinking it, it just was so 90s, but it was so off. I like, know. But with movies nowadays, I don't even know if they go into that kind of process that much anymore, you know? And I feel like... I know, it's, it's rare, especially for a lot of films that don't have the budget for right. in-depth I feel rehearsals. Like that, you just it do it that kind day. of gives me like a product... It gave me like a theater, you know, theatrical mm-hmm. feel, which it's, is, I yeah. think that's what made the movie the movie because I think you're watching not just a movie, but you're kind of watching this theatrical production because it's like... Oh, totally. You feel all of the characters... Like, you feel like they all have bonded, even though there are... You know, things that saying that, you know, Gary Oldman and Renona did not get along once, like, uh, they came yeah, back from rehearsals. But yeah. I have a feeling it was something to do with, like, something going behind closed doors with them. But, like, oh, but also... You think some sort of romance? Because oh, yeah. there was an age gap. There was oh, definitely I, an age gap. I'm sure She was, I think, only, like, because... 21, 22, but he was, like, I think mid-30s by then. So I there think was she definitely... said something along, like, there was, like, teen drama or something, like, in an mm. interview. So maybe it was her crushing on him. I don't know because I think he was probably married and had a kid at the time. I think because oh, you know, behind maybe. the scenes he was talking about something to do with like when he needs to get emotional, he looks at pictures of his child. That's right, his son. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay, so, I saw that too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but also I feel yeah. like Gary Oldman is that type of actor. I guess you want to say method actor in a sense, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where after rehearsals, when you're really going to be doing the real thing. He probably didn't want to be so like chummy and right. close with her because he had, oh, yeah. I mean, yes, for the love scenes and whatnot, but as Dracula, no, like yeah. you have to, you know, so I think he was taking it on a more different level mm-hmm. of, you know, acting than she was at the oh, time yeah. because of the age yes. difference, you mm-hmm. know, and totally. the maturity. And she was- still kind of newish, right? Because she yeah. had just done, let me see. She had just done, well, she was, how interesting. I didn't know this at all. She was supposed to be in The Godfather Part 3. Oh, yes, I read that too. But by Francis Ford Coppola, happened, but and... dropped out. Apparently she, I think from exhaustion or something, she dropped out kind of last minute. She was probably supposed to be his daughter. Which yes, ended up she being, was supposed to be the um... Sofia Coppola role. Yes, yeah. Yeah, like, Sofia Coppola. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which of course really a lot of people critique that casting. Yeah, yeah that that's a whole yeah. other fun casting story. There was Julia Roberts. There was other people in the mix, but Winona was the the first choice, which I totally see. I can totally picture in that. But yeah. so she backed out of that last minute. But before this, she was just in Mermaids with Cher and Edward Scissorhands, mm-hmm. which I've talked about mm. on the show before. And of course, Beetlejuice, and she had done some '80s things, but she mm-hmm. was not, you know. So she was obviously a big thing. She was, you know, already with Johnny Depp and all that. But this kind of started her period piece kind of films, yeah. right? Because she went on to do um, Age of Innocence Little and Women, Little, which Little Women, which I love, right? Oh my god, which She's one of the, I feel the like perfect shows. Oh my god, those movies are when she really started getting nominated for mm. awards and was mm-hmm. taken like super, super seriously. You know, mm-hmm. so this kind of started that wave of like period, I agree. you know, leading women. Yeah, so very interesting. Then of course we have Anthony Hopkins, who's so. Oh. You know, I forgot he's actually so funny in this movie. He, he presents he did, a lot of oh, comic relief. I love what, what do you he think did about with him? Van Helsing. I love because yeah. I don't know if anyone else would have taken it the route that he did. 
Right. You know, because right. if you all, you know, while watching the behind the scenes too, you're, you're like Francis Ford, you know, a couple of saying, oh, he's a, he's a loony or something like that. He's, yeah. And yeah. Anthony was saying how during rehearsals, he doesn't like to do a lot of them or something like that, but like he okay. does like a little bit because then he can kind of figure out how to yep. change, yeah. you know, change something. I'm sort of the same way with film. Like some rehearsals I'm learning, especially like with my latest film, mm -hmm. it actually would have been great to do a rehearsal day. Um, Kind of like for camera to like sort of see what's going on for the actors to kind of figure it out. But I'm the same way. I don't like to rehearse too much. Yeah. Theater is obviously very different. But for yes. film, because then like you don't want to lose it. You know, you just kind of exactly. want to like lay some groundwork, but then you want to save it for like, you still want that you know like, what I mean? new kind of feeling when it comes to the yeah. scenes. But yeah, you don't want to overdo I, it. Yeah. I think he was great. I think his his delivery on some, yeah. <laughs> some of the lines were just so like... Kooky. Like that part, um, oh god, that one editing where like they cut off Lucy's head, you see it flying, then you see that yes. big slab of meat. <laughs> yes, uh huh. Oh yeah, and, and they're out just... to dinner. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then he's just like, she's like, oh, how did Lucy die? And he's just like, oh. and then they cut and back like, to them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that part. Like I paused it the last yes. time because I was like, this is comedy. Like this is oh like, yeah dark sense of humor because all of their faces they were they all look so perfect. sad and exhausted and perfect. her head's there and it's he's so like, oh, quick he's like and then he was just like yeah I'm just you know but it stabbed her whatever that stabbed her heart and cut off her head <laughs> yeah uh -huh. very like he has no like self-awareness in a sense he's just very yeah. like to the point even um, when I he think... earlier when he meets mina he grabs her oh, yeah and just dancing. gives her a kiss and yeah. like he's like so for you know and for I a split second it like that I don't know if this was intentional, but mm -hmm. on this latest rewatch, I was like, oh, are we kind of like suspicious of him? Because the way he's like looking at Mina and like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. There were times where I'm like, are we supposed to kind of oh. get a little skeeved out by him that like maybe he's a vampire or something? I mean, I don't know. I just got it this time. But I think that's just Anthony Hopkins playing with us. Right. I think it's just Anthony Hopkins playing with us because I think he I think he's one of the most fabulous actors out there. And oh, I love God, everything yeah. he does. His voice. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Very and I love how he was like, narrating it in the beginning a yeah. little bit. And then he was Although also I do the have priest. To say, yes, he was the priest in the beginning, which was <laughs> so fun. Like, so oh, he, so Winona... Funny, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I guess Gary is always, you know, playing Dracula, but he yeah. and at least Anthony and Winona play different characters. Yes. So that's cool, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah, he's the priest. Although I do have to say on this latest rewatch, like I said, I've seen this movie mm -hmm. a bunch of times, but it's so fast in the beginning with his narration that it is a little bit um they could have let that breathe a little bit longer right it's just yeah. so like there's this war and he's off and and people are being impaled like it's yeah. just like okay wait we i feel like we just need like two minutes more of just like okay keep going but like pause you know it's I very know. fast his, it his is. opening yeah dracul He's also so powerful when he's shouting. You know, I love when he says "Dracul" when when he um, kills the the, <laughs> the uh, brides, brides with all their heads. Have yep. their heads. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's an amazing. I love that sequence as well when they're the he's circling him yes. and Mina with the fire, and the the brides are there, and then they kill the horse. I completely forgot oh, they killed the gosh. horse. I know. And they're just the way a couple, the flames... a couple of them must love doing stuff like that. But the horse I know you're so right. That's a yeah. That's a great <laughs> nod. I didn't even think about that. What a mm -hmm. great connection. <gasps> mm -hmm. Killing the horse. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. Godfather. And what an in what interesting timing, right? 30 yeah. years ago, this movie came out. 50 years ago, Godfather Part 1 came out. We talked about oh. that on, on the show. Nice. So yeah. how interesting to do t you know, two big, interesting, memorable movies 20 years apart yes. having a milestone year, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so Anthony, of course, earlier this year in 1992, had just won the Oscar for Silence of the Lambs. So mm. he was in that the year prior. Mm -hmm. He also was just in the film Howard's End, leading that with Emma Thompson. And then the last lead we'll talk about, uh, we can talk about all the other great cast members, Sadie Frost, um, Carrie Elwes, oh, um, yeah. uh, Tom Waits as Renfield. Yes. So random. A musician. Very random. Doing a I heard, I read that job. they wanted to see Buscemi maybe as a role. Oh. That's what I read in trivia, but I wasn't sure. Oh, like, that's really down, interesting. Or he couldn't do it, but yeah. I mean, he looks the part <laughs> with those eyes. I, mean, I know, he could I do know. It, but... There's something about Tom Waits, and the I don't really know much of his music. I, I like the it. way that he does it is it's downright. I mean, horrifying. again, it's very theatrical. It's very over yes, the top. That's but what I think is he great. Is a hundred percent committed. Like oh, that is not Tom yeah. Waits. That is the right. Renfield. I agree. Right. I agree. Like when he I think of Renfield, just, I think of Tom Waits. 
Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. And his yeah. look and just, he, oh my, his voice. Yeah, it's amazing. And I mm-hmm. forgot how grisly his death is being, you oh. know, once, once yep. he tells, which I had forgotten all about that as a kid, you know, or, or as a teen, at least when I watched it again, I'm sure that kind of went over my head that he does warn Mina at that moment to like get away from him, get away like, from get here. Get away. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Dracula knows everything. Well, and he like says, that. you have betrayed me. That's and an all of a sudden. Scene cut to oh yeah scene like yes. the going into like the bedroom scene oh and then they have, i love that they have they're all you know their moment yes. which is very sensual very going very, all over yeah. the place yes um, blood the and everything are crazy yeah. but when oh, i mean yeah. helsing and you know all yes, the men come, come in, in iconic it's like you, you see the you know you see him in that final like bat beastly form because you know he takes I on love, different forms during the movie and i remembered that in commercials i remembered that shot of the bat you, you know, know the bat version the more, of Dracula. The most horrifying oh. part of that movie yeah. was when he's walking back into the closet and you yes. see the red eyes. And his red that, eyes. That, I don't know how he, Francis did it, but like that, for some reason, like, and then there was no special effects. That mm-hmm. is terrifying. That I agree. Just like that. It's just amazing. That moment is just so. I know like, that whole that whole scene. Uh, even when, because um, yeah. much like with when we'll get to Lucy's big moment, but oh, much like yeah, when yeah. there's the shot with Lucy where they hold the crucifix up. This time oh, they hold the yes. the cross up and it bursts into flames, yeah. and the yeah. bat. I mean, it's amazing. But I totally agree. It is terrifying, and you yes. know he's up to something. Like oh, yeah. they're all freaking out, and he just slowly, and carefully backs up and those that's red eyes, and then his hair is all white. And that's oh, why I know. Like, then I'm like, wait. okay, literally, <laughs> what wig is this, guys? This is like Lisa right. Rinna with all of her wigs. I'm like, okay, which one is this called, <laughs> right? But then, mm-hmm. yeah, then then Anthony, you know, Van Helsing says, light, light, give us light yes. or whatever, and. And then when and they part, do the light, it's all the rats. It's yes. the rats in the form of a body. Yes. And what is? Oh, and and then it's interesting because there are lots of things that I don't understand but i'm i'm all on board um then mina who has just drank his blood she is like mm-hmm. out of it as the she rats are running around unclean. she says she says unclean unclean unclean, unclean. unclean. and i'm like well, what is this part i was like is that a, a rat talking <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you, i know it sounds like it's like it's so like squeaky yeah, it yes, like, is that yes. her voice so i had to put it on subtitles so i usually don't watch with the you know subtitles yes, so i put on subtitles totally. i re- i I um went back to it and I was like, no, that's actually her talent is saying that. I was like, that's so bizarre. Like, yeah, I don't, it's I weird. Don't... I don't get it. Me but either. it almost made me think of Renfield. Like, that's something he yes. would say. Yes. So I don't know if I don't I don't know what that's about. Maybe there are she some was things coming that... down from the blood high. I, I guess so. And and now she's you know? extra sensitive to things, which would oh, make maybe. sense, I assume, right? But yeah, I maybe completely she's agree about with you, Sabrina. Being unclean, like, oh, in maybe front of Jonathan Harker and like the men because he. Dracula's oh. gone, so now she's not really like possessed in yes. sense anymore. Yes. So now she's realizing that she's unclean. I yeah. don't know. Many interpretations on that. Yeah, I'll give you yeah. that because yeah, she doesn't go full kind of deranged until later no. on. So right. yeah, she might kind of see what she's become. Yeah, that's a good interpretation. Yeah. I want to be what you are. I want to see what you see. I want to love what you love. Take me away from all this. So then our last lead actor we have to talk about. It's Ugh. hard to talk about this movie and you can't talk about Keanu Reeves. So real quick, Keanu. let me tell you where he was in his career and you're going to be like, that explains a lot. So oh, he I'm had sure. just had a big 1991. The year mm-hmm. prior, he was in Bill and Ted 2, I which I believe was, was gonna say. Mm-hmm. Bill and Ted's Bogus Adventure. Or no, I can't. I can never. Is it Wild Adventure? No. no. Bogus Journey. I forget what they're called, but he just did Bill and Ted yeah. too. I mm-hmm. forgot he was in the Bill and Ted animated show. He did his voice mm. for that, which was the year prior. So he was in total yeah. dude Bill and Ted mode. He mm-hmm. had also just done My Own Private Idaho, and he had also just done Pre- Point Break. So he was in total like hunky leading man, like surfer California That's guy why they mode. Chose him I read and now on he's that. in this movie. Yeah. Yes. So. Right, it makes a lot of sense to choose him. He's on the rise, because right? They like want, this you is. Know, he, they wanted the sale, you know, audiences to go wanted, see it because it's right. Keanu they want the girls and the boys to come out mm-hmm. to see this cute guy who everyone loves, who's on top of the world, much like Winona. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Keanu was not I the best him. choice, and I, I love him in so many other movies. And I know, I think he's I know. 
such a good per. You no, know, he seems like such it's, a great person. It just yeah, oh, he was yeah. just miscast. This was just not he was just miscast. the role for him. And and I feel bad I, for him. I'm I sure know. you saw too. He even said like the actors were walking around in circles around him. Like he was just. Yeah, like, I think totally I read where he said league. that he wasn't like really prepared for it because like he was on he was doing so many other projects and right. he wished he had more time with it. I think he really, unfortunately, I think he focused more on like trying to get his dialect to sound mm. a way that his acting yeah. kind of just flawed, you know. Because yeah, I know that as taking dialect classes when I went to AMDA, mm. like it is not easy for me like to, to do accents like I don't it's just right. not like I can I do like maybe Southern the Southern Bell and that's about mm. it. And it's like, but you really need that you know, dialect coach. And I think it's hard. Yeah. And and when you have all these other actors who are doing like such a great job at it, or oh, they are yeah. really British, yeah. it, it's going to come off and you're going it, to, it is going to look flawed, unfortunately. It's, I mean, and when you think of the other just, actors. It's very cringy to hear, to watch. Oh, I he completely starts agree. Saying I certain know. lines. And, I'm like, it's oh, a shame because yeah. he looks great. I mean, we oh, know the yeah. wigs get a little crazy, but he has a yeah. great look for oh, the he movie. Does. The, the hair, like he you looks know who they wanted, very... Who do they who want? They were thinking, I think Johnny Depp was oh, one of the yeah. contenders. And to totally be honest, I think he would have worked really yeah. well. Yeah, at the totally. time. That makes at the time, perfect the young sense Johnny the Depp, time. if you think about it. Oh, yeah. You can do a British accent well. You know, he yep. has that look. But also, was it with the whole Renona Ryder, Johnny Depp? I don't know if they wanted Maybe. to do, you know. Yeah. But I they guess it wasn't have... as big, apparently, at the time, because I did read that. Like Keanu, yeah. I think was bigger than Johnny Depp at the time. Even though interesting, he, just did he was the it boy. It makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Johnny had just been with Winona and Edward Scissorhands, which of course is why they were yeah. they were dating for a while. Um, yeah, it's a shame because he looks good, and you yeah. know, I I feel for the character. So that's a, he at least got the job done with that. I feel but when he just, delivers you just, lines, you just, it's they're so flat. Feel bad for their romance. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. Yeah. Really, you're kind of like i get it girl i'd i'd cheat on yeah. him too like yeah he's like <laughs> he's kind of a dud. Dud. and yeah you bring up a great point he might have been focusing so much on the accent yeah that then that, the couldn't, delivery of the actual like you know and when, when you have gary like oldman who is a, a king oh of accents oh my gosh. you have anthony hopkins you have sadie frost mm -hmm. these are these are natural you know uh british people i think i think they're all british yeah i know and then you, is Carrie right? Ellis, um, yes. Bill Campbell Carrie made Ellis. a Texan, so that was I fine. love, I, I love, love Bill Campbell so much. I, I love him. I love the Rocketeer. He is perfect <sighs> for this role. Really I is. love and him, I Sabrina, and I want him to do death. more. You feel yes. for his death oh, at yeah. the end. That's a sad yeah. death for sure. He's the only yeah. one of those kind of hero guys who gets it. I know. And, but, he's the, but he's the one that starts yeah. the end of dracula which is so yeah. awesome like quincy yeah. is totally like an unsung hero in that way but yeah when the camera is on him yeah. for that second and they're and and carrie El elwes and like all the guys are looking and they know I like oh carrie this guy's elwes, dying oh i know he's great in this too i love how I, I each love of the name. guys is so different and it's funny because people grew up with princess bride i didn't really yes. grow up with princess bride a lot i feel like yeah. i was more of like i agree i the, I would always watch Wizard of Oz. Like that was my kind of thing. But like yep. That's growing why up, too. my first Carrie Ellis, I think, was watching him and Robin Hood Men in Tights. I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. And that's where my obsession with him came from. Like, and I, I think, yeah, so that was a year cute. after this. And, um, yep. you, yeah, such a So cutie. then like, watching him looked... in Dracula, like I love him because he's so pretentious and obnoxious. He's so pretentious. Yes, and he's, per he's like, perfect for he's Lucy, perfect. right? So when this part, I'm talking about Quincy, and I was like, I need to look this up. During the party, you're going to know exactly what I'm saying, where um, yeah. Mina's like, what is that? And she's like, a Texan. And then she goes yes. up to him and she's like, Quincy, please let me touch it. It's yeah. so big. Yes. <laughs> like, I, I know. I because it's like, Bonkers. This is just like, this is Dracula. We're watching Dracula, but then it's like, are you watching Drac like an erotic Dracula? <laughs> like, I know. I know. So it really makes you like look up and you're like, what the heck? It's oh, totally. Insane. Yeah. But like, I love that though. I think it's just like, it's so subtle, but so in your face at the same and, time. And the way she delivers the lines is oh, just she was so perfect. good. How it's so sing-songy and baby mm -hmm. and like, uh, you know. And yeah, and then she pulls out this big knife. But I, yes. it's, it's a great moment because it's so silly and so sexual. But that's mm -hmm. the first time we see the knife that yes. then plays a major role later exactly. at the end. Yeah, so that so is kind of pretty cool. Like that we're establishing... And you the know, whole but yeah. like Arabian Nights book, and then I oh read, my like, god, yes, I love it. The Karma, the whole like Kama Sutra book. Um, yes, I read in trivia again on IMDb that like 
that book went missing after production oh. and no one knows where it went. So someone took oh. it. Oh, <laughs> uh for like some fun times. <laughs> I bet it was Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> yeah. You got to go to him. You got to love him. She is a willing recruit and devoted disciple. She is the devil's concubine. <laughs> You know, so she's been wearing a lot of like in that red. I love that red. The red. The well, we red. think when she gets like yes, iconic. sexualized by yes. the wolf. I, guess I know wolf when she and the wolf creature. have sex. Yeah, wolf, which, wolf, Dracula, which is weird because Dracula weird was because, never a werewolf, right? right. And yeah. I always thought that. But then, like I read that, like a lot of um, how Bram Stoker wrote it was like Dracula was a creature. He okay. Was, you know. Yeah. So like I think either Universal or just as you know with media kind of just like really people thought he was just more like a bat and then a vampire yeah, yeah. But i think in bram stoker's world he he just shapeshift because he oh, could yeah. shapeshift into the fog remember like he, right. he was like oh yeah be fog and then in this version he can go out in daylight he's just not as yeah. powerful mm -hmm. so i think it's a whole different concept oh, that yeah. we have to like remember while watching That's another... it because when i rewatched yeah. it again i was like why is he a why is he a werewolf why is he yeah. a weird thing you know creature thing and i was like i don't get it but then like thinking about it now i'm like this completely makes sense because this was totally bram stoker's version of who he and was and it's scary it's super impressive oh. and i actually do love yeah. when he's like a, a monster werewolf thing i love his point of view like running yes. all around the oh, yard and killing that, that guy. the camera yes i love that and you don't love that. that much anymore either or stuff like yeah. that Mm -hmm. so but yeah, going it's... up to the doors, but then he can't come in because unless he's invited right. in. And I love those those down. doors at Lucy's oh. room. Whenever he's there, the he always looks so spooky. Thing. Yes. Like... Oh yeah, and the when the wolf is biting oh. her, and he's there, and yes. Um, I I have a question yeah. for you, but before we get into that, um, yeah. yeah, you bring up a good point. Dracula in this version can walk around outside, and again, mm -hmm. Anthony with his very quick narration even mm -hmm. says that, but it's again yes. so short and fast, and I that's know. when he's like naked and bursts out of the box. <laughs> but he says like, <laughs> "What, like, what is, is the reason?" Black or is this Dracula? Just kidding. Serious Black I comes know, right? later in Harry Potter. I know, I yeah. know, but like it just gives me such serious Black with things. It's, vibes. Yeah, what I love about this movie is one of the things I love is we see so many different looks for Dracula. Yes. He's, like we said, he's a bat. He's a werewolf. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. daytime, serious black-ish, top hat, you know. I love that which, look too. Wh so yeah, which is your favorite look? What And what is your yeah. least favorite look? For that Dracula. one, but definitely with the, um, the that's called the serious black gray look. Yes. Um, I just, I don't know. I love the whole, he stands out from the crowd. He yeah. just has those sunglasses. There's it's like that blue. Yeah, it's a very blue I theme. By him, to be honest. Like, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. like, he's, you know, he looks good. Um, My least, oh, you know where this is going. Is Tell me. Old, Tell us. Old, old Dracula. Like, I'm sorry. I know With the, like, the boob, boob yeah, hair. Either boob or butt wig. I don't know what you want to call it, but it is, I can't, I can't handle it. And it's just like the outfits, it's just, it's very bizarre, but maybe that's what you want. You know, they wanted, they wanted it to yeah. be like, this is this absurdity. Yeah. I did read at, that yeah. uh, one trivia that I read was that Francis Ford Coppola told all the department heads, his whole team, mm -hmm. he said, the word is weird. Okay. Do, do things as weird as possible. Make your nightmares come true. Uh, look at art, like, <laughs> He wanted weird. He wanted something yeah. that was never done before. Um, let me just read real quick. And what I know it Gary said. Oldman had to get a voice coach to um, lower his voice an octave or something like that. Oh, or, you know that's yeah. interesting because in other movies his voice was higher and yes. and yeah his voice can be higher. So yeah, yeah here it was it was almost like a whisper sometimes, very yeah. deep. <laughs> Make no mistake, he must be stopped. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.